Hello guys, welcome back to your English manual. This is the chapter number three of our verb tenses series. In this series, we're going to talk about each of the verb tenses of English, from the simplest ones to the most advanced ones. In the previous chapters, we started talking about the present simple. We've already seen the structure in chapter one and learned about the verb to be in chapter two. So now we'll see when to use this verb tense. And since we're going to talk about the uses, the easiest way to understand is by showing a lot of examples. So that's what we're going to do. You guys will see that it's actually pretty similar to Portuguese. When we say an example, say after us to practice, okay? Shall we? Let's start with the first use. What exactly does facts and generalizations mean? They're facts that the person who is speaking believes that were true in the past, that are true now, and that will be true in the future. And an important detail, it doesn't matter if the person is right or not. Examples. People need food. Fortaleza is in Ceará. It rains a lot here in February. The afternoon starts after noon. Light travels at almost 300,000 km per second. Cats like milk. Technology is important. And also remember that it doesn't matter if the person is wrong. For example, the planet Earth is flat. Brazil is a small country. Let's see examples in negatives and in questions too. The mall is not here. Are cell phones dangerous? What do dogs like to eat? Anyways, this is the first use to make generalizations. And it's just like in Portuguese, so the comparison is easy. The second use, though, isn't about something that is always true, but about current thoughts and feelings. Examples. This cake is wonderful. My brother is tired. I love my girlfriend very much. He wants to learn English now. I don't want to go to the gym. She isn't in the mood for a movie. Do you prefer to stay at home or to eat out tonight? Where do you want to go? So the second use has to do with something that is true now. Maybe it won't be true in the future, but it is now. The third use is about actions. And we're talking about actions or things that happen regularly. Examples. I travel to the USA every year. We study English at night. He goes to the movies on weekends. She works in a bank. I play tennis. The train leaves every morning at 8. She always forgets her documents. The police never come here. More examples. My son doesn't eat vegetables for lunch. He never forgets his wallet. My sister doesn't study Spanish. Do you usually go to bed late? Does your brother go to the gym? What do you do on Saturday nights? So the third use gives this idea that something happens repeatedly, as a habit. The fourth use talks about the future. Yeah, you've heard it right. 
it's possible to use the present simple to talk about the future. However, in order for this to happen, we have to talk about events that are scheduled, so they have a specific moment to happen. Sound weird? But look, we do the same thing in Portuguese. Let's see some examples. The movie starts at 9 p.m. The bus leaves at 3.45 a.m. My classes finish on Monday. The play starts in five minutes. What time do you have to board the plane? When does the game begin? I have a test tomorrow. This is one of the uses that students of English forget the most. They end up using the future simple to say those sentences, but it's the present simple that should be used, okay? In fact, since it is used to talk about scheduled events, it is very common to use some specific verbs with it, just like in our examples. Arrive, begin, start, finish, end, leave, fly, open, close. It doesn't necessarily need to be with these verbs, but it's pretty common with them. But you guys don't need to memorize it, okay? The fifth use is about actions that are happening at the moment we speak. Those of you who already have some knowledge about English know that there is a verb tense that is used specifically for this which is the present continuous. We're not going into details about this verb tense now because we're still going to make a video about it. But in general terms, to make this verb tense, we use the verb to be and a verb with the suffix ing. For example, with the verb to study, we can make the sentence I am studying. Please notice that we're talking about something that is happening now, just like in Portuguese. But what happens is that some verbs, called stative verbs, are not usually used in the, with the ing suffix. So they're not usually used in the present continuous. Therefore, even though we're talking about something that is happening now, we must use the present simple with those verbs. A common example is the verb to know. You're most likely never going to hear knowing in English, even though sabendo exists in Portuguese. Then we don't say now I am knowing, agora eu estou sabendo. We simply say now I know, agora eu sei. But we're going to talk more about this topic in our video about the present continuous, okay? To finish, let's give the answer to today's challenge. Is the sentence, my mother arrives tomorrow at 9 a.m., correct? And the answer is yes. Even though we're talking about the future, since we're saying tomorrow at 9 a.m., the use of the present simple is correct. Remember that the present simple can be used to talk about the future when we're referring to a scheduled future something that has a specific moment to happen. Here, she has a specific moment to arrive, which is tomorrow at 9 a.m. So the sentence is correct. Well, that's it, guys. This video is really short because the goal is only to say when to use the present simple. We always recommend you guys practice a lot, okay? So do the exercise in the description of the video. We hope you have learned and liked it. If so, please leave a like and share this video. You can help us help more people to learn this. See you next video.